Riverside. I always feel like Ron Burgundy when I'm like, <laughs> like that. Like that. Uh, what did it say? Go F yourself, San Diego. Don't, why do you say that? Why do you got to bring that up? They go, we're 0 and 11 and extra in the game. Like, that's. It's awesome. Like, you gamble on that, you win a lot of money. Unfortunately, well, I don't want to talk about it. Let's move on. Then, in that case, this or that time. Oh, let's do it. Lose your eyesight. Or lose your hearing. Go, go blind or go deaf. What do you I can lose my hearing. I can still see everything. Lose my eyesight. Can't see nothing. Hear everything. I'd definitely rather be able to see. Definitely rather be able to see. So you'd rather go deaf. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think I, the, the movie Rocky 2, when Rocky pretty much tells Mickey to screw up, then he goes to see him later. And he knocks on his door, and Mickey comes out. He's he, Mickey's upstairs, and Rocky's mm -hmm. downstairs. So Mickey <clears> comes <throat> out. And, oh, who the hell is going down there? And he's like, oh. And, and Rocky tells me, hey, Mick, what's that thing in your ear? Because he's like old and like Mitch McConnell, right? He's got a hearing aid. And, <laughs> yeah. So he's old. He's got a hearing aid. He's like, oh, this, oh, this is this is to hear stupid things better. <laughs> I didn't remember that. <laughs> I, I it's like the greatest line in the world. So, so actually, the the and the, Santa, the Santana quotes thing. Um, somebody posted that one time because I said that at one time in class. Say hey, if you want to use headphones to, well, why do you use headphones? Oh, it's to block out stupidity. <laughs> yeah. Noise canceling. Yeah, that's Cancel right, baby. Yeah. When I was young, I used to go into the restroom and turn on the fan. You know, ADD. I had to block out the world. So when I was in college, I had to go to the restroom and turn on the fan. My roommates were all banging on the door. Hey, I'm reading. And now we have the noise canceling headphones. Oh, that's why this. That's why this chair is here. Right, so it's really low sitting chair, V chair. Oh, that makes yeah. So I, can I sit walk like in this. and you're like down here. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, so no, so if they walk in from from this side, they can't see me because I'm hidden. And if they walk in from this side, they can't see me because I'm hidden. So and then I have noise canceling headphones, so I can hear them coming. So I won't feel bad. People are banging on the door. I won't you hear them. So I don't feel here? bad. Yeah, you I go just here? sit down here. So they walk in, they can't see me, and then they go away. Then I'm still in the zone. I never lose my concentration. That's a big deal. ADD is it's a beautiful thing. It can be. <laughs> oh, it can be. Beautiful mind. Unique I'm, New York. <laughs> oh, so, so what would you rather do? You know what? I think I'd rather keep my hearing. And I was telling uh, a friend this. Is like, I, mean, I think because of Go like... Go blind, huh? Yeah, because... I understand, like, they're both, like, it, it it, would be really tough to lose either one. Yeah. And I think most people, I feel like most people will say, I'd rather, I'd rather keep my eyesight because I want to see people and I want to be able to, I, I can do sign language, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not even doing that right, but anyway. Um, yeah, you are. <laughs> But it's I like I didn't notice. Yeah. The gold to me. All right, go. Ahead. So <laughs> I think I'd rather be able to hear and communicate verbally. Yeah. That way, um, just because like the I don't know, like the auditory sense for me is is more important. Like just listening to music. I, you know how Spotify gives you like the year in review, like what you listen to the most and what's your genre, what what songs you listen to. I had like something crazy, like sixty thousand minutes listened throughout the whole year, because the first thing in the morning I I turn my music on, like I have to have I have to have music on um, all day, and then like on my drive, you know, have an hour drive mm -hmm. here. And how I drive home, so I have that, and then uh, at the gym. Yeah. But also in my classroom, I'm, yeah. I play music, certain yeah. playlists, of certain things. Ah, uh, no. you know, certain that? things. Uh, I have certain things going on, uh -huh. like, and I have specific playlists. So I'm always listening to music because it puts me in a in a better mood. Right? Yeah. So uh, yeah. So I don't know. I think I'd rather listen. To people, and yeah, I'd, I'd like to be able to, I don't know, see people. But uh, growing up, my my great aunt, 
my grandma's mom, my grandma's sister, I'm sorry, she was blind. She went blind, though. So, and I remember her walking around the house, you know, fine. Like, she knew where everything was at eventually. Like, I'm guessing, like, she figured like, out. How, like, how would you wipe your ass? But they, uh, <laughs> There's ways for how that. You know, I don't know. How would you know? It's like, how would you know if you're done and... This is, these are, these these are, are little things. These are, yeah, the little things you don't really think about. But I mean, you're gonna lose stuff either way. But that one is actually pretty good. Listening to this and that. Um, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's it's they're they're both they're both a big loss. So I don't know. This it's one of those things where it's like either way, whichever one you choose, yeah. you're gonna lose out on something. So it's just more like what do you value more? Like being able to see yeah. people, like being able to communicate with them. So that see, way. if people were if people were if people were deaf, then we'd have, you know, one less list. We'd go down from six listeners to five listeners, and that would you know that would completely <laughs> cripple, <laughs> cripple the show. Yeah. Yeah. So, would you rather view it or listen to it? I yeah. would rather listen to, to it myself. <laughs> that's, that's just me. But I don't know. It's just it's who really are really some famous thing. blind people? I mean, Ray, Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder. Musicians, they went blind. They were born blind, though. Wasn't like somebody like Beethoven or Mozart? They were deaf. I think he went deaf, and he would listen to the vibrations of the uh, of, uh, of the piano to kind of listen yeah. to how things. So we lose our hearing we like snakes, and we have to like feel everything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. I don't know. Who's a famous deaf person that you can think? Of? There you go. So they don't I, exist. Um, so maybe it'd be better. I'd have a better shot of being famous if I was just blind than being deaf. I mean, Helen Keller was deaf and blind. You right? know what's fun about Helen Keller? She was like a really bad freaking racist. Really? Yes. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Really big. Like you could Google Interesting. kids. You could Google this stuff. <laughs> fun fact. Yeah. You at home. Fun fact. That, no, seriously. Helen so she, was a racist. Yeah, she, she had a real problem with black people. She could see. I didn't she not know hear. that. Yeah. You, um, but how? Like, if you can't see somebody, or how do you? Clayton Bigsby, the black oh white supremacist, right? God. The black Clayton. guy who thought he was white, and then he Ray actually Chappelle. once he found out he was black, he divorced his wife because the wife liked the black guys. So that yeah, was, that was Clayton Bigsby, Dave Chappelle. Just yeah, what? What an episode. Fun fact. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Speaking of fun facts, let's do it. Let's get into some fun facts. Today, yeah. today is a special day. That's random number three, kids. Today's a super blue moon. It's not just a super moon. It's not just a blue moon. It's a super blue moon. Basically, a super moon is like when the, the moon looks bigger because it's closer in orbit to the Earth. Yeah. So it looks bigger. Uh, but a blue moon is like when there's two full moons in a month yeah and it doesn't happen very often that's what they call it hey every once in a blue moon right you ever heard that yeah. so today's a super blue moon yeah and it's uh not gonna happen again for yeah. for a couple more years i'd rather have a blue than red but i just i mean i'm not trying to keep a gangster yeah i'm just uh i don't know something about a nice blue shade versus the red shade like um dodger blue right yes yeah. <laughs> that's stupid <laughs> Done. So let's get some fun facts. Uh, you want to go first with me? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah let's Ready? do it. Okay, go for it. I'll go first. All right. So fun fact. We're going to get some fun facts today. Here's, here's the fun fact. As you get older, your brain begins to stop getting pleasure from new music, causing your musical taste to stagnate. So, I mean, th that's... You always hear this, right? So, you, you definitely always hear this stuff. Uh, is that time lapse? <clears throat> Thank you. You always say, "Oh, the kids nowadays, the music nowadays." Oh, uh, that rap music. Yeah. yeah. But I remember again. I, I we might have mentioned this on the show before. Man, I used to grow up on NWA and Two Life Crew and Too Short. And I remember NWA one particular song talked about um, running a train on a girl, murdering her. Then like dumping her somewhere, and I'm thinking, yeah. And now there's the adults saying, you know, music nowadays, and I, you know, those people normally say that they, they, oh, the NWA was great because, no, it, there's music, there's good and bad music in every album and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, but there you go, it's human psychology, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to feel that too because I'm starting to listen to the same stuff. I'm having a harder time listening to music, mm -hmm. and I really have to try. The older I get, more and more and more, I'm getting old, a few more gray hairs. 
<sighs> I get gray hairs in my nose. That's, yeah. It's interesting. It's frustrating. Well, I kind of think about it this way, too, because... I'm farsighted like, and you're not. I, Nobody likes you. But I'm colorblind, so... Ah. Uh, fun fact. That's right. Colorblind. You, blind, so. you rather be blind or colorblind. <laughs> 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 All right, go ahead, go ahead. So, like, it's funny because, like, you know, I remember growing up, like, be listening to Tupac or, yeah. you know, Snoop or whatever. Yeah. And then my mom was like, ¿Qué es esa música? You know, yeah. paga ese cochinero, you know. Yeah. And, and they'd be criticizing the music that we listen to in English yeah. or in Spanish, yeah. right? And so I kind of think like, well, when they were growing up, their especially parents, my dad, their parents hated their music. my dad was a, like a big Beatles fan. Mm-hmm. And if you think about the Beatles when they first came out, Hippies, the, the Beatles, they were criticized. They're like, oh, yeah. kind of music. Elvis Presley, the way he danced. Yeah, it's like, too sexy. Too sexy. It's too thing. provocative. And that's by, like, the, by the way, you know what happened when Elvis Presley came out? I think, God, who mentioned this? I forgot who it was that said, that was Presley, he's nothing new. Black people have been doing that for years. Mm-hmm. So if you really listen to the guys way back in the day, like, uh, who am I thinking? Um, I have these pictures in my head, but I can't think of the names. But, I mean, they, they were already doing this stuff mm-hmm. in the 50s. Well, Elvis he had Presley a just, strong yeah. influence from a lot of uh, black yeah. musicians. Yeah, well, yeah. To, to be dancing and singing like mm-hmm. that, hell yeah. It's so, like, I mean, like, was it Ray Charles that said that? I forgot. So, like, when I when I saw this, I was like, you know what? And I kind of try to make an effort to listening to more Little uh, Richard. of the modern, like, yeah. the modern music. Well, we're, we're high school teachers. Yeah, because... I think it's our responsibility to, to do it. Well, it helps to kind of make those connections, right? Street cred. Street cred, right? So, but uh, I, always tell my, I always tell my students this. I was like, the classics will never go out of style. Mm-hmm. You always have the classics. So typically, when I play music in the in my class, I listen to some of the popular classics, right? Whether Vanilla it's Ice, or whether it's rock, or like honestly, I'll play a lot of instrumental music. I was playing like Wu Tang instrumental because yeah, yeah. it's a lot of pianos and stuff. Like, oh yeah, those. Are, but it's yeah. like no lyrics, just so they can listen to the beat, you know, and kind of listen to. It makes me think like Color Me Bad and. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, ooh. Oh, we might get <laughs> yeah. blacklisted by YouTube. So, so. Be careful. So I don't know. I kind of I kind of see that because like I I like what I like. I like old school stuff, but I do I do try to like listen to more modern stuff, especially yeah. like uh, like some of the like like Spanish rock, uh, Spanish hip hop, mm-hmm. uh, reggaeton, uh, Mexican like Norteño music, regional. Like you have a lot of like. Grupos right now, Grupo Firme, yeah. Grupo Frontera. I, n- I, n- I never like to roll, like, hey, what, like, oh, man, is there music you can't stand? I'm like, no, I, I think it's important to know a little bit about my old Red Bull manager, um, Chris Step. Mm-hmm. Like, Nick, you need to know a little bit about a lot. And I was like, you know what, that, that makes a lot of sense. So in music, in the same way, mm-hmm. you never know who you could connect with and what you would get out of that conversation. Because, like Bill and I once said, you could learn something from everyone. Man, genius. What you got? Oh. So, I found this one interesting. Do you know there are 96 bags of human poop left on the moon by crewed missions? What? So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, it's India today, and why would it particularly be India today? Well, I'll tell you why, and that's because India landed on the moon. They just landed on the moon. That's right. That's right. So, Dumb and Dumber, Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, they, they had Jim Carrey, and they, like, they, they would. No way! Yeah, so, on so the moon. I mean, oh, yeah, that's right. So that's, that's you know, th- these are things that I really don't realize. So I, I think about people, um, like, you know, in, when they go camping mm-hmm. and all that stuff's loaded down there and they have to go to a drainage thing to unload it. Mm-hmm. And I guess I would just think, well, they just bring it back with them. But what if, who knows what? So leaving 96 bags of shit on the moon. And nobody ever goes there, you know. You can't you can't smell it because you're in a space suit. So, that's hey. a, but that's a yeah. pretty shitty thing to do. It's a pretty pretty shitty thing to step in. Yeah, it's yeah. Like a shitty situation. Fertilizer. Oh, what's his name? Matt Damon in Mission to Mars, right? He used he used, he used a bag of shit to grow potatoes. So mm. human waste at its finest. Yummy. Since you have, we don't have we don't have Remy there, <laughs> we don't have Remy. There, so man, we're just gonna have to do it ourselves. We're gonna do. Do That's things right. you want some. You want something done yeah, right. So now. I, man, I, that, that one. I saw that one. That one blew my mind. You gotta do something right. Yeah. You gotta do it yourself sometimes, right? So, yeah. anyway, fly back to you. What you got? All right. I never had one of these growing up. What? <laughs> or to this. Oh, day. I, I was. I was in college. With, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. So, 
PlayStation, right? The, the, the first Sony PlayStation was never meant to be a product. It was intended to be a new console that would play Nintendo games exclusively on CDs. Nintendo backed out of the deal at the last minute, but Sony went ahead and launched what would become the most successful console of all time. This so, was you the end this old school. I had this in college, and, and it was the end of it was the end of Nintendo. Like, I mean, not the end. The end. Was, I think there was still like the Nintendo sixty four got really big. Was that the last one they got really big? Uh, but it was kind wow, of well, it's no, kind of, it's still the, the Nintendo Switch. Oh yeah, the, brought them back. That's, uh, uh, it's made them still. Yeah. They're still in the game, so to speak, right? Yeah. So that's what the gamers play. Nintendo Switch. Yeah. It's. Uh, I ran the gaming club one year. I don't know if you knew that. Well, I took when I first started. I took over the gaming club. Oh yeah. That's okay. What, okay. That's when you went uh, when your uh -huh. daughter was born. I took yeah, over the yeah, gaming yeah. club. Okay. And all they right. had their Wii's. They had their Nintendo Switch. They brought in all of their that consoles. That is the baddest club that I ever was a part of because Matt, I don't know anything about. Oh, Mr. Santana, you know, you, you, you you're a game, you're a gamer. Like, well, I mean, I play Madden or you know, you know, NBA Two K or something like that. But beyond that, I don't really, you know, of course, there's the, like the greatest game of all time, which is uh, Grand Theft Auto. I don't know. I was more of a uh, FIFA's incredible Mario Kart. Mario Kart. I mean, on it's Nintendo sixty four. It's timeless, right? My my oh, daughter plays it today. Man. She's five, right? She's a, so so, uh, but they man, they, that thing, that meeting, the whole meeting would be alive. Like there would be people, other teachers or administrator walk in, and be like, "Wow, what is this?" And I see, saw everybody just some of the fire. Everybody said. They, now the funnest part about that, the gamers that are like really nerdy and stuff like that, and I'll never forget. And there was a. I remember even when girls would walk in the meeting, mm -hmm. nobody would turn and pay attention to a girl walking. They didn't care. Mm -mm. They're worried about. Hey man, we got you know whatever the hell they're playing. Well, some of the kids there in the club, they were in my class and they're uh -huh. super quiet. Yeah, too. But when the gaming club met, Woo. it was on. Like they Woo. turned it on. It was like a whole different persona. Just baddest club I've ever seen on campus. And they were like, Not "Oh, good. let's go!" And like, yeah. "Who the heck I is run, this kid?" I've like, run a lot of clubs over the years. That one was by far and away. That that thing was a party. Yeah, it was like yeah. intense. But Sony capitalized on Nintendo's. Uh, I, I, mean, I, I had it uh, freshman, sophomore year, and we used to always play with my, my buddies, and we played NCAA. Mm -hmm. NCAA so that was... Uh, on NCAA, PlayStation. On PlayStation. PlayStation. And so it was uh, NCAA uh, 98 and 99. We were playing with Ricky Williams. Yeah, yeah but, oh, man. but I, was, I was actually good at it, well, relative, because I was just good next to my roommates and stuff like that. But, man, we would, we'd go off. Uh, so Nintendo, though, like, they've... <clears throat> I watched this documentary on them. It's interesting. They kind of see like how they came to be, and then <coughs> you have the uh -huh. the what do you call it? Game Boy. Yeah. <coughs> the Game Boy and how they took off. I'm choking over here. Don't choke. Um, how about throw <coughs> lozenger? So oh, I lost my train of thought. But, <coughs> but the the Nintendo Switch brought him back. Gabino yeah, never chokes. He's a winner. Yeah. Um, but I remember with the Nintendo, RBI Baseball. Yes. Remember that? Oh. All the Marios. Mario 1, 2, and 3. I, I kind of like Mario 2 a little bit more. I my, weirdly, my, I don't know why. One of my favorites was Zelda. The, but okay. the OG Legend yeah. of Zelda where there was That's, all these secret things you blow up. and. Well, Zelda's like yeah. one of their biggest games ever, uh -huh. right? Um, but when it came to... Uh, eventually, Sega came in... Um, my brothers, I had to take a Genesis. They bought a take. My parents didn't buy. Like my oldest brother bought it. The Madden '93. And not and Madden '93. Yeah, that was the game. That was that was the game. Because they brought game. all the classic teams in, so you could play mm -hmm. with like '85 Bears, the '84 Redskins, and 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 then uh, on Nintendo, you and you played Tecmo Bowl. Nineteen. Ah, so, uh, the OG Bo Tecmo Jackson. Bowl. You picked Bo Jackson. Absolute... You picked you picked the Raiders, and that was game. So you they, weren't even allowed to if, pick. So so. There was a thing where I saw where there's some modern day baseball. Adam LaRoche, I think, I, th I posted one time where his son did not know mm -hmm. who Bo Jackson was. And he was like eight or nine years old. And I was like, dude, they should kick him off the team based on that alone. Because this is the greatest <laughs> athlete of all time. In gaming history. Yeah. So if you want to know how good he was, if you don't know who Marcus Allen is, he was actually the Heisman Trophy winner at USC. Heisman Trophy, the greatest football player in all the land when you're in college. Mm -hmm. And then... He actually set the record for the most rushing yards in the Super Bowl in 1983 or 84. I think it was mm -hmm. 
think it was 83, at like 201 yards rushing. So, I mean, he was like all pro every year. And then Bo Jackson shows up. And Bo Jackson would show up halfway, like he would miss the first four or five games or something like that. And all of a sudden, Bo Jackson is not being used anymore. They don't. Or, I'm sorry, Marcus, Marcus Allen. Allen. They when you we're talking like NFL uh, MVP, Heisman Trophy winner. Like Marcus Allen was absolutely incredible. Yeah. But he would take a back seat to Bo Jackson. To Bo Jackson. And that guy was. It, oh, he was a superhuman. Fastest super forty human. Fastest forty time ever at uh, NFL Combine. And or he looked like a linebacker. Yeah. Like he was a monster. Yeah. It was. And so when they put him on Tecmo Bowl. And there are some people that could run past people. There's some people that were slower, like a John Riggins, who could barrel through people. But Bo Jackson could do both. Yeah, because you'd, you'd use like you'd have Bo Jackson, and you'd like you literally could run all the way up to the end zone, and then like before you score, you could turn around and run all the way back, and nobody be able to tackle you all the way to the end, and then come back, and it wasn't even fair. God, that game was amazing. It was, but so you weren't we, you weren't allowed to pick pick them because it's like hey we, you know because you're gonna win it was cheating it was yeah, cheating it was a, it'll be a yeah. cheater so but yeah it's crazy to see how like nintendo's decision not to take on sony allowed them to sony and the playstation to really take off so yeah. imagine imagine a world where gamers didn't have playstation and now there's xbox and well not anymore and so, what, what xbox what? is what happened no more they they couldn't compete i think xbox is well, you had like the Xbox One and stuff like that, but now it's it's basically the new PlayStation Five and the Switch. That's the those are the main ones right now. Wow. Yeah, I'm not saying. I mean, there's still the Xboxes, but you don't really see them as much. My, Sony my, my PlayStation has, is a the, my son has an Xbox. It's like a rivalry. You gotta mm-hmm. pick, you gotta pick a side. Yeah. But yeah, so, PlayStation so for me, is I was definitely, always a PlayStation you guys. So the yeah. first Xbox came out. I'm like, I shouldn't say Xbox. Xbox is, this is, this is, yeah. It still exists, yeah. yeah. But with it the was, new PlayStation now, PlayStation yeah. Five, they definitely. It was sad that, that when when I. Had and now there's you don't even need DVDs no more. Yeah. You don't need CDs. It's like you, you can download keep the game. play them online. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was it was sad when I had a kid, and we're always telling you not to have kids. Uh, <laughs> you know, Pete, Pete and I, they do not have, don't have kids. Just, so when I had a kid, that's when that's when I bought the, my last PlayStation. Mm-hmm. It was right before that. So I still had it for years and, you know, whatever. But yeah. then when my kid, I remember my kid got familiar with uh, the original Nintendo. I thought it would spot me. I so have the original Nintendo. Yeah. That's I still that? have it in a box and everything. I have the, the duck hunt gun, have the controllers. The, what I don't have is the, is the super pad. The, the, you know how you would play the track and field? And the, what do you call it? It had a game, a turbo pad? Or? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait, 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 wait. You've never told me that you have the OG Nintendo. Because if you had told me, no. I have it. No, you never told me. Because if you had told me, I, I probably would have gone over a lot more. <laughs> that is like, sometimes I drive to Yuma just go to like Just to play Nintendo. Or just go to like Chick-fil-A or just to, you know, whatever. Take my daughter to a playground because I'm bored out of my mind. That was more during the pandemic. Yeah. Now it's like, yeah, I can imagine my wife. What are you going to do? I'm going to Yuma. What are you going to do? Well, play Nintendo? Play Nintendo? We're going to go. I got the code of Mike Tyson's punch out. I'm going to fight Mike Tyson. Oh, right yeah. Now. I have I have punch out. Well, you better, or else I have it. Um, there's certain things like you have to. I remember I had to have punch out, Legend of Zelda, of course the original Mario. Remember? No, no, everybody's got their paper. Yeah, there's there's so many oh, classics. Paper boy. There's so the the Contra? original wrestling thing. What's the code of Contra? Up down, up down, left right, left right, B A select start. Oh, BA, everybody knows that. Yeah. Everybody knows that. B A B A select start, baby. Mm-hmm. That was unlimited lives Contra. Is it the thir- no, you get. I think you get thirty, um, thirty or fifty. You get unlimited lives. It's not unlimited. There's a limit. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I never died, so... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the only way to win the freaking game. Yeah, don't I mean, die. Yeah. Don't, don't die. Yeah. What's, don't, the, what's the secret to life? Don't, don't die, die, eh? <laughs> but... Uh, who's up? You or me? Me? Go for it. What you got? Fun yeah. fact. Fun fact. People who regularly consume spicy food tend to have a higher tolerance for physical pain. The compound caps, capsaicin... Found in chili peppers triggers endorphin release, which can increase pain tolerance. Wow. There it goes, my fingers. So that is super interesting because when I was growing up, uh, what would you call me? I'd be, oh, a little bitch. <laughs> yeah. I, remember if, I swear if I didn't have my uncles, my uncle uh, Gabriel, Johnny, Georgie, 
because hey, there was 14. I had 14 uncles and aunts on my dad's side. And I go over there. If I didn't have them, I'd be a very different person. Because I remember they would give me the football, and I was like four or five years old. And I would run down the hallway, and dude, they would boom, jack me up. And I, I did, even if I get hurt, I didn't want to cry. Because if I cried, my mom would come down the hallway and start yelling at my uncles. My uncles are my heroes, so I don't want my mom mm. yelling at them. So anyways, but if it wasn't for that, I'd be worse. So my point is, is I didn't actually start eating hot stuff until I was 19 years old. I actually got a job picking asparagus. Mm. And you know, my Spanish is terrible. Okay. And so the only thing I needed to get, like street cred with the crew. Uh-huh. So I made my mom start buying me jalapenos. So every day I'd take something like tacos, I had to have tacos for lunch. Mm-hmm. And then I've had jalapenos and I remember it was hot as hell, but I had to do it and I had not to show a face because I wouldn't at least have that. Yeah. So you, you could actually develop a tolerance to it. Yeah. So did but it develop you, a pain but, tolerance? I don't know. But you could also develop uh, stomach issues because of that. Yeah, like, you have a hard time waking up. You know, uh, but like when well, like I, I really know. like to do this, but my stomach hurts. Yeah, because yeah. uh-huh. I know people. The moment they eat certain peppers, it's like uh, uh, they feel like in fire, out fire. Yeah, but yeah. that's interesting, especially like, if you're eating Indian food. Woo! See, and that's the thing is, there's different types of of, of peppers, right? Because yeah. some people all oh, like. Mexican peppers. Oh, and now they have the, the, the chip challenge. like one chip. See, that's what I was about to say. I was like, that, it's not, that's not... It's not flavorful. It's not even just straight yeah. hot. It's just... There's, there's some things that are like um, the habaneros. Okay. They're freaking hot as hell, but they actually have this like, almost like this sweet flavor to it. My nephew And started, then it hits you. Boom. My yeah. nephew started growing those, uh, those, what do they call the reapers? The Carolina reapers? Ooh, he's yeah. like, he, he loves growing those peppers, Ooh. but he's kind of like us growing up. You know those little uh, chiltepines? Yes. So my dad, you know, they're, being from Sonora. They're different. They're tasty. Just my, a different he, my dad, in everything he wants to add chiltepines. Uh-huh. Like I'll go over and uh, have dinner. I'm like, uh, echale chiltepin. Uh-huh. I'm like, dad, I'm mm-hmm. eating salad. You know? yeah. uh, no. Or, but he wants to add it to everything yeah. because he, he loves his. I remember I was dining He hardcore. loves Sonoran food, right? Everything in the chiltepin, you know, is, is when I was his. Di- when I was starting hardcore, I just have salad and I just put, um, what do you call it, sriracha on it. Like that. See, and like sriracha? Like the sriracha sauce, like I can't eat that because it'll mess me up. Like oh, your stomach. Yeah, yeah. Like okay. I, my, I like my stomach will start hurting, me. and I don't know if it's because of like the vinegar. Yeah, yeah. So That's I, probably why. Yeah, but, vinegar jacks, vinegar jacks up. Yeah, but like a good serrano. Oh, I love like make. I have. I like my mom taught me this salsa with it's a avocado blend with everything green. Uh, green onions, tomatillos, serrano, um, and jalapenos, um, and it's like a really creamy avocado-based salsa, um, but it's not extreme spicy. Mm-hmm. Habanero is a little bit higher end, but it's still, like you said, flavorful, but like these Carolina Ghost Reaper no. XL Atomic Bomb, yeah. uh, that's that's not even like... Yeah, that's Did you know it doesn't actually physically burn either? It just sends a signal to your brain that you're on fire. Well, they said it's like, well, so our tongue has different. I mean, uh, even like if you, you rub. You well, taste, I, what are the different tastes? Uh, bitter, sweet, sour, uh, salty. Spice, spicy. No, spicy is not one of them, though. So your tongue has different, like, I don't know, oh, taste regions. Yeah, yeah, spicy is yeah. not a flavor. Spicy, but we, sweet, we, sour. No, sweet, sour. We associate bitter, spicy yeah. with flavor, but it's actually yeah. not a flavor that you're, that you're, I don't know, it's weird. Like your taste yeah. buds recognize. I, yeah. I was reading that. Um, I mean, there's flavor in all these things, but the fire is not the flavor. It's, it's a sensation. A okay. And that's what okay. we say. Like, right, 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 and right. so we, we enjoy yeah. the sensation. Yeah. And so I, it's I remember, weird. I don't know. I didn't understand. I'm like, what? I, I remember we're all eating lunch and I know like Pete would eat the hot stuff. This is back when we used to actually eat food. When mm-hmm. we, now we're too old. Now we got to watch everything we eat, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, back in the day is when day. we'd actually eat, like, regular food. You could eat whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so I remember we, and sometimes I'd bring these little, little chilitos, and I'd give them to Pete and give one to whoever else. Like, Ed might have tried one or whatever, but, but uh, Rubio would never do it. And he's like, I don't understand how you can, enjoy, like, what do you, you, just enjoy, you just enjoy burning yourself? I'm like, no, I actually enjoy the flavor. It's, so I understand where he's coming from because those peppers do exist, but, mm. well, yeah. Yeah, but there's a difference yeah. between flavorful and, like, mm-hmm. just, 
like that show Hot Ones, so those yeah. chicken wings. Yeah. They always have like these super spicy fla like yeah. flavor uh -huh. types, and I'm like, nah, that's not even. Mm -hmm. Can't even enjoy. It. It's more like a like a gag yeah. thing, yeah. like a prank or whatever. But yeah. uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't I don't mess with any of that. So, anyways, I need to kill that fly. Go for it. Today's not only a special day because of a super blue moon. Okay. Oh, the super blue moon. Yeah. But this is the last Wednesday in August. Yes, it is. So the last Wednesday in August in Spain is called La Tomatina. La Tomatina is an annual festival in Spain where people throw tomatoes at each other and start food fights. Purely for fun. <laughs> purely for their enjoyment. So today is La Tomatina Day in Spain, and you're gonna have this massive, I'm sure you've seen it before, like they have these massive trucks that go down the street, and I they know. have like all these tomatoes, and people just have this massive food yeah. fight. I'm like, dude, that'd be, I don't know if you've ever had a food fight or been in a food fight. In high school, it was a thing. In senior year, it was a thing. Yeah. I specifically remember. Shout out to one. the class of 98. <laughs> Well, the class of 2001 at Yuma High. Yeah. And it wasn't specifically like seniors or anything, but it was just, there was, Everybody. there's one time and I, I just remember like there was a group, like these specific groups that had beef with each other. Mm -hmm. They just didn't like each other. And I was friends with everybody. Yeah. And I remember like I was hanging out with, I would say what's up to a, a, one of my friends. And I just remember seeing like an apple, like a half of an apple just kind of. I was like, what the hell? And then, Starts off with the first one. Yeah, and then from and there, it's like quiet at first. And then there's a retaliation, like what? And you see like maybe a juice one, box, maybe two, like a like a, a milk box, uh -huh. just. Pew. And then and it's not like a little like it's not like a skittles yeah. like Hoo. no it's apple like holy shit. and that kind of like hey what the hell you know and then pew, then pew, then pew, pew. and then next thing you know just shh. and it, everybody's like oh shit it's a food fight and just. You saw pizzas and Everything. burgers, and then it. you saw like these plates flying. I'm like, oh yeah. crap! And then, then if you're especially like if you're wearing a white shirt, you duck, get under. Ours, ours, like, ours wasn't about beef. I mean, it might have been, but I just happened to be in the room, right? And you just see one thing fly, and you're like, because we already had a few before, and like, all right, here it comes. <laughs> and one, two, and all of a sudden, like it's like rain that comes out of nowhere, boom, just starts hitting. And it, oh, I didn't take the last one up. It just start, it just starts hitting like crazy. And yeah, you either got a duck, hopefully you're not wearing a white shirt, but if you are, it's not a big deal because everybody knows there was a food fight that day. And yeah, we got kicked out of the cafeteria for I think like a week or something like that. Uh, we, we'll have to ask uh, Mike's security guard about that if you remember those. Yeah. Uh, from, from but the I, and then uh, when I was... I was entertained. I thought it was funny. I was like, oh my God, I got I got dirty. Uh, yeah, it was No, pretty, I, I thought it was pretty fun. Like, it was pretty fun. Yeah. I, felt bad for the, I felt bad for the cleanup crew. Yeah. But... And then at the same time, like, but at the same time, it's like, damn... What a waste of a perfectly, you know, good pizza. Yeah, take, yeah, take one more bite of the hammer. Ah. I was like, I, nah, yeah. I'm not throwing my pizza. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping that. Yeah. I'm throwing the plate. You're on the table. You see some ketchup flying. It's like mac whatever. and cheese. It's that pizza. Damn, I need some ranch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, you got some on your face. <laughs> so, yeah, today is a, there's a massive tomato food fight in Spain. Yeah. If if you're near nearby, for mm -hmm. all of our... One percent of our German listeners, since we have a couple, oh, a couple listeners in India, check out Spain. Massive food fight, La Tomatina. Sign of a good time right there. All right. So, all right, you got one more before so, I wrap this up. Being a baseball guys over a five-year stretch, ninety-three to ninety-seven, Tony Gwynn's lowest batting average was three fifty-three. Three fifty-three, and if you don't know what this means. If you are a long-term guy in the game of baseball, probably 15 to 20 years, and you batted over a lifetime over 300, you're probably in the Hall of Fame. Probably have 3,000 hits. You know, stuff like that, right? So, but for those people who don't understand or don't follow baseball or don't know the statistics, so 353, if you look at this batting average, what does that mean? It basically, it's 35% of the time you get, a, you get a base hit that you're successful. And that's one of the interesting things about baseball I tell people all the time is that... Just because you hit a ball hard doesn't mean you're going to get on base. Yeah, but you if, you, if, you, uh, huh. if you are successful 30% of the time, that means like 
you went up you you went up to bat ten times and three of those times you got a hit, you're pretty freaking good. Like yeah. that means that you failed or, or was not successful seven times. Baseball's life, kids. But that just shows you how hard the game of baseball is. That you're gonna be, you're you're gonna fail more than you succeed. Hardest but thing to do in ba- hardest thing to do in, in sports is hit a hit baseball, a baseball. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? So this guy, uh, what a man! That, what Actually, a freaking tear. in three ninety in nineteen ninety four, he ended up at three ninety four, the closest anybody has come to four hundred since nineteen forty one, when uh, the boy Ted Williams yeah. hit four oh six. So I and, and, and like who was it? Um, uh, uh, Reyes, the second oh, baseman Luis for the Reyes. Marlins for a while. He was hitting over four hundred. All star break, I think it was like three eighty. Now he's in the three fifties, I think. Yeah. But still, That's still, people are. Oh my God, Well, he's not hitting four hundred. Dude, the dude's hitting still in three fifty. How many? And you watch him on TV. And he is like three, four. Every game, he is like three, four ball, well, balls. Well, if you think how many, how many players right now are hitting above three hundred? Yeah, like it's the especially, percentage is small. Especially if you're a Padre fan. Well, that yeah. kind of leads to my next point. Yeah, you, you have two of them, so kiss my. Hey, that's the biggest shame about Tony Gwynn. Freddie Freeman actually reminds me watching his at best reminds me of Tony Gwynn. Well, they make it, but he just has power. Freddie Freeman I mean, just has But pop. he's not a power hitter. No, he'll hit 10 to 20. Maybe, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, he'll hit 20. Tony Gwynn, in and, and a good year, he'll hit 10. You know what I mean? But so he's, he's like a, a slap hitter. hitter. He's yeah. not a power hitter. And that, is not that's a what hitter. kind of, uh-huh. you know, distinguishes a guy like Tony Gwynn with others mm-hmm. is that he's not trying to hit a home run. He's trying to get on base and slap the ball. And Freddie Freeman, they made a comparison to him the other day is that this guy's hitting like Tony Gwynn where he's not trying to pull a ball. But if you throw it inside, he's gonna hit it out. I think. I think they but said he's trying to hit the yeah. ball to wherever you're placing the ball, and he's trying so to, effective hitting the ball the other hit way. Hit the ball hard somewhere. So I think they put some set on Tony Gwynn. Like uh, it was uh, what was it? How many times he struck out? No, the, the two guys that have struck out the most in baseball mm-hmm. in one season it was like one sixty. I forgot how many. And they compared it with Tony Gwynn's numbers, and Tony Gwynn struck out just a few more times than that. Over a ten-year span, then the other two guys were one-year span. That's crazy. And then with major league heat, it... and that just kind of helps you, like, see just how he is one of the greatest hitters in baseball ever. And the shame, the sad part of it, here he comes. Is that he was on the Padres for his whole career. Like he never got a chance to see success on on the next level. Like only two, he could only, never only two times. He never won it all. 84 and 98. Heck, he never won it all. And, and that's we, a we shame. Got, I think we got swept in both series. Or maybe yeah, was, 98 for sure. Yeah, 98 there we got no swept chance. by the, by was, the Yankees. They and that was, ne- at they the time, they were chance. like the no-name Yankees. They, they were exceptional. Yeah. They and they didn't then have a 1984 is against uh, your boy Kirk Gibson. The and Tigers. the Detroit Tigers. The Tigers, yeah. Yeah, yeah we might have got swept if we didn't lose. Maybe we won one game. So I think we've won one. So that's like, game that's the biggest, the saddest part about Tony Gwynn is, is that he never was able to win it all. How many times did they make the playoffs and in his long career? Like being a Cubs fan, you just love it and show up and you deal with it. And if you're on the freaking bandwagon, yeah, that's, you, you that, root for a winner, right? That's, that's the price you pay. Uh-huh. uh-huh, so, uh-huh. Anyways, let's wrap this up. So best, best thing all week? Uh, the ones, oh. Okay, best thing all week. I'll go first. So I actually had two. Uh, one of them is, might not be appropriate, but I mentioned. But but it was a kid came in, and I'm always screwing around with the kids, so I don't know how literal this comment was. But uh, this kid, um, she she was walking down the hallway. She saw two kids making out, and they're in the way. So she said she pushed them out of the way. So she walked in, and she's like, "Hey, Mr. Santana, I just pushed a freshman out of the way." It's like you did. Tell me about it. It's like, yeah, it was two freshmen making out. P- public displays of affection, right? It's like, Even when you're a doll, it's like, hey, take it easy, right? <laughs> but the fact that it was just so funny, such an original thing. That I couldn't help it. I gave her an eagle butt. <laughs> you gave her an eagle butt. Yeah, <laughs> but I made it. No, not those. No, not, <laughs> not, yeah, show it to him. Yeah, we, we put those okay. in the restroom when we run out of toilet okay, paper. Bye. <laughs> so, but but the other one, the other one, real one is I'm really excited about my restroom pass thing. I always gave out these Santana bucks, and if you're a former student, uh, you probably have seen them, right? Yeah. Do you see see what it says? 
Can you read that right there? In Santana, we trust. <laughs> you bet your ass, baby. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I really. Hey, Pluribus yeah. Santana. Uh -huh. Alfred E. Newman, the guy from Mad Magazine, he's on the cover and he's wearing his patriotic Uncle wow. Sam gear. Yeah, so. It's legit. So, anyways, uh, so, oh, so I get three per semester. Oh my God, only three restroom passes? That's what I used to give in the past. But then I read a study, something about when you're doing the pee pee dance, it's hard to take in new information. So like, you know what, uh, my son's girlfriend, Jaslyn, she's, she's like, hey, I, what if you had a timer in the classroom? So. That's why you have that? No way. I saw him like, why do you have a timer? Well, I mean, one, I'm an idiot. <laughs> or two, before you walk out, you grab the lanyard and you press this bottom button and here we go, baby. Yes. If they make it back within five minutes, I give it back to them. So they... They pretty much have unlimited restroom passes uh, for the semester as long as you're back within five minutes. Mm. So it's an experiment. We'll see how it goes. Interesting. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, it, it I, I, I used it. To, it the, okay. Today was the first day it was in use. And people weren't just going to the restroom. Dude, literally, they would run. They would be back under two minutes. I think we just solved. They would the, be back under two minutes. Look, like, whoa! I mean, they don't have to run, but I'm not gonna tell them anything. I think we just solved the big one of our big issues on campus. There it is, Santana books. I'm glad you say STDs. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, actually, both of our schools are notorious for that. Uh, Arizona State, SDSU, go STDs, right? <laughs> yeah, they, they, well, they, so, I don't know if Tosh Point so, nicknamed so, ASU uh, SPVU, right? Oh, yeah. is, is that the is that the disease? Yeah. I don't know. I know. I'm telling you. Everybody makes something, fun to be, of something to be proud of, right? Yeah. Anyways. Wear it, baby. I mean, no saints in SDSU either, so. <laughs> I'm not saying I participated. I was a saint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course we were. Now we're teachers. Of yes, course sir. we were saints. All right, go for it. Best thing I've seen all week. I saw it just like two days ago. I was going to go with the memes. The memes have been on fire lately. I'm going to put that on the back burner. Uh, Dreadmar I. Dreadmar I. He's going on tour in the U.S. He's a, a big-time reggae uh, singer from South America. He's coming to Arizona. He's he's uh, he'll be in Phoenix, but he's actually performing in San Luis uh, in October. That's pretty and much. So I'm like, what? Like, I love concerts. Uh, I got a couple concerts coming up. I don't like concerts because when, when I have to pee, I go crazy. Well, my wife knows about this. So my bladder's never been the same since the Snoop Dogg concert. Wow, it's a whole yeah, other story. That's a different story. The whole concert, me and my wife were trying to work our way to the front. Finally, got to the front and then hit me. And I told her, "I have to go pee." She's like, "Well, I'm not moving." <laughs> so I contemplated like pissing my pants. Like, well, today's not going to be that day. And I was like hopping uh, in line, <laughs> like going crazy, asking him to do it. Do you yeah. mind if I go in front of you? He's probably all that's one of the biggest. Hype. Nah, bro. That's one of the toughest things about going to big, yeah. like big sporting events. Is like, when do you go to the restroom? That's why when I don't do want to leave like, Southwest. Yeah, these hallway restrooms oh. are. Oh. So anyway, when do you go to the restroom? You got to be strategic, especially like if you go to a baseball game. Yeah. Unless you know, you yeah. go, Unless you go to like a Diamondbacks game and there's never anybody there, or like a Rockies game. I went to the Rockies in the summer. Yeah, beautiful stadium. They right? played the Padres yeah. and there was really nobody there. Yeah. So you can go anytime, but. If you go places like, you know, Dodger Stadium or, or Wrigley or Fenway. I see, it's I see Petco now. I mean, and you know, mm -hmm. you know the game's going off when you try to go to the restroom. Not only is there a long line, but once you get in there, you have to be really careful not to slip on urine. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's okay. So in concerts, too, like, like go to concerts, like, ah, oh, it's a great song. When did I go? Oh, I got to go. So, but coming back to what I saw. It's, it's like a car they, drive. You have to strategically plan what you're drinking. Mm -hmm. And the older or, you get, the worse yeah, it is. Yeah, that's why I'm like on, on road trips. Yeah. I try not to drink anything on the road because I was like, I don't want to stop. Yeah. So I'm, I got tickets to the, the concert in October. Mm -hmm. It's like, boom, can't wait. Excited. Taking a couple friends. Be a good time. So yeah, Dread Marai coming to Arizona. I'll be in San Luis in October. And that's where I'll be. So I have to pee just thinking about it. Yeah. I think it's a perfect time to. Take a pee break. Should we do a whole episode on peeing sitting down? What do you think? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, that's where we end. Episode 20 in the books. See you guys next time. Boom.